Today we're making the ultimate hobby electronics tool. We'll be creating two essentials for any DIY electronics enthusiasts. This is of course soldering helping hands and a variable benchtop power supply. We'll also take it one step further and merge these two together. Now let's get started. To make the power supply unit I use an old laptop charger because I have several of these laying around. The voltage and current is regulated by a DC to DC step up down converter. I picked up a small LCD screen that has built in voltmeters and amp meters. As for connectors I use a couple of banana plugs for the variable outputs. I couple this with a constant 5 volt which goes to a female USB connector. The helping hands are made from flexible coolant pipes, normally used for lades, and regular old alligator clips used for gripping things. I started everything off by cutting the plug on my laptop charger. This will be our main power source. The voltage and current output is controlled by turning these two trim potentiometers on the buck boost converter. To make it easier to control, I desolder these and replace them with regular pot meters of the same value, which is a max resistance of 200 kilo ohms. Now this is going to be the complete circuit. The laptop charger is connected to the buck boost converter in parallel with power going to the LCD screen. This is also connected to the smaller and constant step down converter. The voltage from this is fed to a USB connector. Most of my projects use 5 volts along with some other voltage, so it's really useful to have more than one output on the benchtop PSU. Also went ahead and added a simple toggle switch in line with the laptop charger output. The variable output is then connected to a pair of banana plugs to serve as outputs. These also have wires running to the measuring inputs on the LCD screen. After testing the electronics and making sure it all worked, we can fire up the 3D printer. All in all, it took about 7 hours total to print everything. This was in 0.3mm, which is the roughest resolution on my printer. The case itself is designed with decent margins. This means you can fit different sets of electronics inside if you choose to either upgrade or switch out something one day. While soldering, I became really aware of the limits in my cheap helping hands. Luckily, we're making a solid pair right now. The best way to secure the alligator clips is to first cut the edges on the tubes just enough to slip one in. To make sure everything was held in place I added a tiny drop of super glue. Now we don't want the alligator clips biting too hard or shorting out any electronics. To remedy this I added a couple pieces of heat shrink tubing on the teeth and secured them with the lighter. I pulled off the orange screw terminals on the bottom of the tubes, then I used a bit of force to replace these with new ones I 3D printed. I recommend printing these in a fine resolution, as it makes everything slide much smoother. Okay, we've made all the parts we need, now it's just a matter of bringing it all together. The potentiometers and banana plugs came with the necessary nuts for fastening, and the LCD and switch are simply pushed into its place. All this makes it so much easier to take everything apart for repairs and modifications later. The USB connector had to be glued, so I taped a piece of duct tape on the outside which held the connector in place while I applied a liberal amount of glue. On the case itself I started by mounting the helping hands adapters. This was done while I still had room to work on the inside of the case. Now helping hands always need a sturdy base to keep everything still. Here this is solved by mounting them onto a power supply unit which usually weighs a lot. This also means your tools take up less space on your desk. After this I glued the charger in place with quite a bit of hot glue just to make sure it doesn't come loose. The two voltage regulators was mounted on the floor making sure the wires were entangled way too much. When everything is stuffed inside, it's finally time to put in the front panel. In this build I use mostly M3 bolts, 16mm long, but I do recommend bolts about 6mm shorter, I just use what I had available. The lid is mounted by inserting a nut and bolt in each of the pockets on the lid. The nut is then held in place by a tiny dab of hot glue, and now the lid can easily be screwed in place. To finish off the front I added a couple of knobs on the potentiometers which makes it look much nicer. And now with everything complete you can just plug in the power and switch it on. Now you can control both voltage and current in whatever circuit you're prototyping and you have a few extra hands for soldering. Thanks for watching, as always leave a like, comment and subscribe for more DIY tutorials coming your way. You can find detailed instructions, downloadable files and all parts used in this build in the video description. 